Is there any standard program? Very nice. But who is the president? Is there a president here? Is there a resident president? He was busy. He came back very late. I know he did. Yeah. You could hear them all coming. <laughs> Resident of Kuhn or Cologne. Who's a resident of Kuhn? Kuhn. 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 You're a Kuhn? You're a Kuhner? Ken. You're a Kuhner. So what do you normally do? You sing any particular song? Anything we like. So take your Paravita Prabhu's say, not just suggestion, but his um, inspiration. We'll sing Sri Chaitanya. This song, not really sound the actual title name, but Sri Krishna Choi Tananya Prabhu, Do Yakuram Perhaps you know it off by heart. If not, maybe you can put it on the screen, or maybe you cannot. But try to find it somewhere. If you don't know. It's in the songbook, if you have the songbook. They don't know the name. What's the name? Well, you say, if, you just, if you have it on your mobile, you can just Google it on the street. It's a very unusual title. And those who know it. Otherwise, if you have song books, that would also be... And even better if you can put it on the screen up here. Ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> Not the ice cream. It's ice cream already. Ice cream. How many of the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavas here today are from Kun? 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 Let's say it in English. Cologne. How many hands, hands sky high? Not so many. Oh, some. That's very good. How many of you can understand English? And of course, if you haven't put your hand up, how many of you cannot understand English? We don't understand it. Well, no. They can kind of capture it, I think. If we seeing it. So, uh, say it in, well, it may be Russian, or it may be German, or uh, I don't know what language you all speak. Uh, who speaks German? Who does not understand my English? We understand kind of English. English, it's English, English. Uh, okay, you have to ask that in German, not in English. Does any you speak German? No? What language do you speak? Russian Ukrainian. Russian and Ukrainian. So ask it in Russian. Any Russian speaking devotees? Any German who speaks German? You speak German. Ask in German. Does anyone not understand English? Spricht jemand kein English? Okay, well, if there is anyone who needs a Russian or German translation, you'll have to sit next to someone. There's obviously not many personalities. Okay, maybe some unseen ones. Do we have it on the screen? I can't see much at the moment. What do you say? We're getting the... I can't read a word. Nick, Nick something. We'll plow on and try your best. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhudaya Koramore. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu. Doya Koramore. Sri Krishna. Oh, oh, oh. 
Question is where are we reading from in the transcendental diary? Of the story? Where are we reading from? Hari Bo Maharaj. Good morning. Good morning, Maharaj. Great. And, uh, my question is, are you reading from any specific place in this book? I read yesterday, C C. <laughs> uh, well, this is, is Transcendental oh. Diary. There is a bookmark oh. here. Is yes, there? Yeah. Should no. be. So maybe someone can find the bookmark. <laughs> Om Jnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshodan Militam Yena Mitasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Sapitam Yena Uttale Swayam Rupa Gadamayam Nati Svapadantikam Vandevam Sri Guru Sri Dhabhavadam Sri Guru Vaishnavam Sya Sri Rupam Sagajatam Sahagana Ramanatam Vitam Sansajivam Sadhetam Savadutam Parishana Sadhetam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Radham Sahagana Radhita Sri Vishakamitam Sya He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Diyavanu Jagatate Gopesha Gopesha Kanta Dr. Kanchana Gorandi, Rade Vinda Maneshwari, Vrishabhanu Sude Devi, Pranami Hari Priya, Kanchakarpa Pradubhyasya, Kripa Sindhu Bhaevacha, Pajitanam Bhavanebhyo, Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupi Chananda, Shri Adaita Radha, Shri Vasani Gora Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Shri Prabhupada Ki. Hare. 
Hare Krishna. Krishna. In the presence of His Holiness Mahavishnu Swami and His Grace Paravita Prabhu and all the assembled Vaishnavas here today in Vaishnavis, we are very fortunate to be in, I might never ever learn how to pronounce it, Kun. Whatever it is, it is. Cologne, as they say in some places. And uh, first time, I think, in about eight years, I can't remember exactly, maybe eight years we were here ago. And uh, we're pleased to be again here, especially with the Rathiatra yesterday, glorious event. And many books, I think, were distributed. I don't know how many. Did you announce it this morning? Yes, it's only the Germans. <laughs> only the Germans. What does that mean? I thought we're not the body. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, it's wonderful. Whatever went out yesterday. I, well, I had a Spanish book. When a few Spanish people took Spanish books. Dutch people took Dutch. Well, I didn't have any Dutch books, but they took English. <coughs> Different languages were there. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough foreign languages, <coughs> Arabic, one. Different books were going out, but mostly German. So we're going back now to uh, a time in history um, in the Transcendental Diary when Hari Sori Prabhu was personally Srila Prabhupada's servant. And as we all know, or maybe we don't, but he was keeping a very, very, uh, as accurate as you could, diary of the um, unending spiritual, uh, say, pastimes of Srila Prabhupada. So this is from December the 14th, 1975. Which and volume is that? Excuse me? Which volume? This is volume number... <coughs> this is number one. Volume one. December 14th, 1975. And we're in Delhi. Many of you cannot remember where you were in 1975. They were not born. They were not born. <laughs> Even if we were born, we can't remember. Maybe. Actually, I can remember. Um, why? I'm, I, I, I'm pretty sure I can remember. Because it was around about that time, within a few days, that Gorni Thai were installed in New Mayapur in France. And I was there for the installation, so I'm almost certain I was in New Mayapur on this date, maybe on the way or in New Mayapur at that time. Um, so now we're reading. We're in. It's the, many of you have been to Delhi, and you've probably been to the beautiful temple of Radha Partha Sarati, um, which is now in. Um, um, what is it called, that area? East of Kailash. East of Kailash, huh? Okay. So, very beautiful temple, very large. But in 1975, in December, Mahavishya Swami would definitely remember, um, it was in a very small place in what's called Todermal Lane, uh, near Bengali Market or something. Yeah, yeah. Very small, little place. You could hardly... A few people take darshan of Radha Partha Sarati. It was like a funny angle. The room went like this. And it was like L almost. And uh, it was a very small place. I remember going there in the beginning of 76. And uh, now they have this. And uh, not only one temple in Delhi. How many temples are there now? 15. 15 temples? Yeah. Active temples. Um, we were there just, what? Two months ago? Maybe two months ago. We stayed in Rohini Temple, which is a temple in the north, sort of the north of Delhi. And it's a huge building, which is almost completed. Beautiful temple. Very beautiful. Uh, maybe opening in this year, next year, I don't know, but very soon. And then we went to Punjabi Bag, another temple for the Bhagavatam class. Straight after that, we drove to Noida, to another beautiful temple in Noida. Then after that, we drove to a very special one. I've never been there before. It's in a place called Chippy Water. Mm -hmm. If you know where that is. Yeah. In the center of Old Delhi. 
there in Chandi Chowk. It was very crowded little lanes. It's so narrow, you can't drive through it. The bicycle, pedestrians, some little rickshaw thing. But it's so narrow, and the little place where Prabhupada was staying there, of course, now it's Iskon Temple. It's an Iskon Temple there. Um, we stayed there for a little while, and like that, there, we just took a little pilgrimage of some of the temples. There's two temples in Gurugaon, and another one coming up in Noida, and there's all over Delhi. There's Dwarka, and Saridabad, and this one, and that one, temples everywhere around Delhi. Yeah? And they have how many Rathiatras they have now in Delhi? We have one here in Cologne. I'm going to say it's from Cologne. <laughs> and how many Rathiatras in Delhi? Anyone know? Yeah. Oh, it's many. 20, 30, 20 or 30 at least a year. At least. Wow. In different <laughs> suburbs of Delhi. Yes, there's Rathiatras going on all over India. Of course, now they've been restricted. I just heard that now they have, they have to have it within that eight days or whatever it is, Anavasara. No, within the eight days of Lord Jagannath going out and coming back. Everyone has to have their Rathiatra apparently in India during that period of time. So if you, this, if Cologne was in India, you'd have to have had it next, I don't know when the Rathiatra times are, but within that timing. So anyway, we'll go back to December 14th, 1975. Early this morning, Prabhupada walked his usual route past the Kala Kendras and Bhavans. Cox crowed, and occasionally a few cars and trucks passed by. Tejas, he was a present when I went there, I guess he was a present now also. Tejas, Ansaduta, Harikesh, Nayani Biram, and I kept close as he strode the littered streets, noting the dilapidated, if you don't know what dilapidated means, it like means broken down, you know, buildings breaking down. Dilapidated appearance of New Delhi, Prabhupada remarked with disapproval, if this is the capital, what does it indicate about the condition of the country? <clears throat> Okay. November or December? December the 14th, 1975. Okay. Prabhupada questioned the wisdom of pursuing economic advancement. Pointing to a tree, he challenged Hari Kesh. Where does its food come from? Krishna is providing but these rascals, they cannot understand. The animals have no arrangement for making industry. But nature's food is already there. They are not opening factories. Modern men claim to be more civilized. But they have simply complicated their activities by opening factories. Formerly the sages took fruits from the trees and milk from the cows. <clears throat> Whatever nature supplied, that's all. Hari Kesh mockingly protested. But it's a lot of fun to drive fast cars and have sex and see movies and this is fun, you know? It's the only way to enjoy. You ever meet people like that? <laughs> Quite often, huh? Prabhupada retorted, Yes, enjoyment is there in the cats and dogs. When you enjoy sex in a palace, or the dog enjoys sex on the street, the value is the same. Taste does not increase or decrease. But you are thinking to enjoy sex in big palace is advancement. This is your foolishness. Actually, sex enjoyment in the palace or on the street 
is the same. <laughs> Harry Kesh made another pitch, speaking for the materialist. But there is happiness of the senses when you have sex life. No. Happiness is there is, not for the rascals, but for the intelligent. Happiness there is. Unless there is happiness, how we are seeking for happiness. Unless there is immortality, how we are seeking for immortality. There is. But the way in which we are seeking for these things, that is wrong. That is the whole education. Just like a foolish animal, he is seeking water from the desert because it appears that there is water. That is his foolishness. A human being, he knows that there is no water. It is all sand. That is the difference between animal and human being. Nice. How far do you read? We stop there or what do we do? As long as you want. But you can also read from the Chaitanya Sanghita now if you want. I, okay, I, <laughs> I'll do whatever. As long as you, whatever you want. Uh, I'm difficult to make a decision, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice the story's coming up. Is it? Okay, we'll read on a little bit further yeah. then. Huh? Thank you. <laughs> to emphasize even further the effects of illusion and its result, Prabhupada told us two anecdotes of what it meant to be an animal. You want to be an animal, listen carefully. <laughs> a dog was carrying some bread in its mouth. Seeing its own reflection in a pool of water, it thought there was another dog carrying a piece of bread and immediately barked to challenge its imaginary competitor, hoping to gain more bread. Thus he lost his bread in the water, just as he barked, the bread obviously fell out of his mouth into the water. <laughs> Similarly, and then Prabhupada tells a famous story here. Similarly, a lion was once tricked into thinking there was another lion within a well. He gave a roar, and a roar came back. Thus he jumped into the well and lost his life. So this is a story which, um, I don't know if it's in the Niti Shastri, or yeah, where yeah. is this story, somewhere? Um, of a ra it was a rabbit, wasn't it? A yeah. rabbit? Yeah. This rabbit, there was some arrangement in the jungle that, you know, because lions are the king of the jungle, and generally animals are afraid of lions. So they made an arrangement to, you know, one animal would have to be fed uh, every day or whatever to the lion. So it came up so that they wouldn't be afraid all the time. So it was the time of this rabbit to go to the lion. The rabbit was a little intelligent rabbit. So the rabbit went to the lion, but he was very late. He was supposed to be there, you know, on time for dinner, but he was very late. You know. So he got there eventually, and he looked very tired. And the lion said, what is this, you rascal rabbit? Why are you late? Oh, you don't know what I had to go through on the way. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you should think yourself fortunate, because on the way there was this terrible lion that tried to eat me on the way. But I'm your food. <laughs> I had to do everything I could to avoid this lion eating me on the way. Lion on the way? Lion on the way? Where is that lion? Where is it? Where is that rascal lion? So, I can take you there if you want. So then the lion was very happy, huh? This nice rabbit was taking him to this rascal lion to get rid of this other lion. He's challenging his domination in the jungle. And he went there and he said, the lion is in the well. It's down the well. They came to a well, deep well. So the lion looked down the well and sure enough, 
he saw a lion in the bottom of the well. It was, a, it was his reflection in the water. He thought it was a real lion, stupid lion. And he roared, how dare you challenge me? And the roar, because echo, the roar came back up at him. And he thought this is a lion down there. And he jumped into the well. Splat. End of lion. <laughs> Clever rabbit. Well, is indicating that story. He gave a roar. Thus he jumped into the well and lost his life. Although lions are fabulously strong, Prabhupada told us, in spite of so much strength, he's an animal. Similarly, this modern civilization, in spite of so much so-called advancement, they are simply animals. A big animal is eulogized, is glorified by a small animal. That's all. Animal is animal. Big animal or small animal. Prabhupada pointed out one of New Delhi's flea-bitten dogs sniffing in the gutter. And if you've been to India, you may have seen some of these flea-bitten dogs sniffing in the gutter. The wretched dog was homeless, searching for food and suffering without a master. This is Shudra, Prabhupada said. If anyone depends on the master's mercy, he's a Shudra. Here in New Delhi, these big, big buildings, big officers, as soon as the government will sell, they will be street dogs, that's all, the officers. Now they are plundering by official instrument. So when the government will be finished, they will be street dogs. They will become street dogs. This is your civilization. Immediately, if all of a sudden there is attack on New Delhi, all the people will starve. There is no food at home and they'll die. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. If there's a marker, it'd be good to put it in there, wouldn't it? If that's for your reason. Is there such a thing as a marker? Yes. A bookmarker. Yes. We're at the top of page 109. Jay Jay Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Advaita Chandra Jaya Gora Vakta Vinda Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gora Vakta Vinda Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Hare. Hare so we're reading from the Majulila, chapter 1, and today I believe it's 219, although the marker's on a different page altogether. And it looks like it's 219, text number. Um, and yesterday, um, it, um, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, is this Lord Chaitanya and Rupa and Sanatan? Yes, it is. Sakar Malik Davya Kas. He's just bestowed his mercy on the two brothers. 
and they began to chant the holy name. So today we're going on, if you kindly repeat, Nityananda Harida Srivaskadarhar Nityananda Harida Srivaskadarhar Mukunda Jagadananda Murari Vakreshvara Mukunda Jagadananda Murari Vakreshvara Nityananda Harida Srivaskadarhar Nityananda Harida Mukunda Jagadananda Murari Vakreshvara Mukunda Jagadananda Murari Vakreshvara Nityananda Haridas Shivas Gudadhar Nityananda Haridas Shivas Gudadhar Mukunda Jagadananda Murari Vakreshvara Mukunda Jagadananda Murari Vakreshvara Nityananda Haridas Shivas Gudadhar Nityananda Haridas Shivas Jagadananda Murari Vakreshwar Nityananda Harida Shivas Gadadar Nityananda Harida Shivas Gadadar Mukunda Jagadananda Murari Vakreshwar Mukunda Nityananda Harida Srivasa Gadadara Nityananda Harida Srivasa Gadadara Mukunda Jagarananda Murari Vakreshwara Mukunda Jagarananda Murari Vakreshwara Nityananda Harida Srivasa Gadadara Nityananda Harida Srivasa Gadadara Mukunda Jagadananda You might be able to learn this first from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. It's quite easy. <laughs> <laughs> Any ladies? Nityananda Harida Srivasgaratha. Mukunda Jagadananda Murari Vakreshwara Nityananda Haridasa Shrivasa Nityananda Haridasa Shrivasa Mukunda Jagadananda Murari Vakreshwara Mukunda Jagadananda Murari Vakreshwara Nityananda Nityananda Lord Nityananda Lord Nityananda Haridas! Haridas! Haridas Thakur! Haridas Thakur! You're learning Bengali here. <laughs> Srivas! Srivas! Srivas Thakur! Srivas Thakur! Gadadhar! Gadadhar! Gadadhar Pandit! Gadadhar Pandit! Mukunda! 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 Same as in English. Huh? <laughs> Jagadananda! 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 Murari! Murari! Vakreshvara! Vakreshvara! The hard verse. Translation, there is no purport. There's an unlimited purport, but this follows on. All the Vaishnava associates of the Lord were present, including Nityananda, <clears throat> Haridas Thakur, Sri Vasa Thakur, Gadadhar Pandit, Mukunda, Jagadananda, Marari, and Vakreshvara. It would appear that there were many, many more of the Lord's associates. That's just including the, these very prominent associates. Just to hear their names of the associates of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is so bene beneficial, <laughs> so purifying to just hear the names. Haridas, Haridas, Srivas, Gadadhar, what to speak of Nityananda. 
We'll go on to the next verse, text 220, 220. I don't know if you can put it up or not. Savara charane dari paridui bai, sabivale danyatumi paile go san. No, you don't want to chant. I'll just go on to the English yeah. translation for a book. In accordance with the instructions of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the two brothers, Rupa and Sanatana, immediately touched the lotus feet of these Vaishnavas, who all became very happy and congratulated the two brothers for having received the mercy of the Lord. Purport. This behavior is indicative of real Vaishnavas. When they saw that Rupa and Sanatana were fortunate enough to receive the mercy of the Lord, they were so pleased that they all congratulated the two brothers. A jealous person in the dress of a Vaishnava is not at all happy to see the success of another Vaishnava Thank you. in receiving the Lord's mercy. Unfortunately, in this age of Kali, there are many mundane persons in the dress of Vaishnavas. And Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur has described them as disciples of Kali. He says, Kali Chela. He indicates that there is another Vaishnava, a pseudo Vaishnava, with tilak on his nose and kunti beads around his neck. Such a pseudo Vaishnav associates with money and women and is jealous of successful Vaishnavas. Although passing for a Vaishnava, his only business is earning money in the dress of a Vaishnava. Akimano Thakur therefore says that such a pseudo Vaishnava is not a Vaishnava at all, but a disciple of Kali Yuga. A disciple of Kali cannot become an Acharya by the decision of some high court. Mundane votes have no jurisdiction to elect a Vaishnava Acharya. A Vaishnava Acharya is self-effulgent and there is no need for any court judgment. A false Acharya may try to override a Vaishnava by a high court decision. But Bhakti Vinod Thakur says that he is nothing but a disciple of Kali Yuga. And a purport. So, at this time, or had been, maybe not exactly at the time Prabhupada wrote this, but there had been such endeavors among some of Prabhupada's God brothers to establish themselves as the head of the mission, like the Acharya, and they even went to the courts. And Prabhupada is making this quite clear, without mentioning any names, but this principle of trying to establish oneself based upon material strength, 
material whatever wealth material influence etc is not the eligibility for in this case being a Vaishnava Acharya it's a big topic we can look at another angle of this particular purport which is of course underlying that principle is how we react how we react when we see another Vaishnav Vaishnavi receiving Krishna's mercy in various ways in one sense we can measure our own devotion accordingly when somebody another Vaishnava appears to be receiving the mercy how do we feel how do you feel (coughs) (coughs) was that a comment was it a comment or did someone got a sore throat back there jealous Maybe. <laughs> I don't I've put my glasses off. I don't want to pinpoint anyone. I can't see who is anyone in this room right now. But somebody is indicating a response that we might sometimes have. And sometimes it goes further than that. Sometimes not just internally feeling jealous. What do we sometimes do next? We may go to the extreme and start blaspheming, or we may be a little less you know, heady. What was that one? Sabotage. Sabotage. Sabotage? Sabotage. Sabotage? Yeah, you may sabotage them, if you can. Today we have an excellent means. We don't need, you don't need to go to the high court. We have a, a much more effective method um, available nowadays. Um, through the, the mercy of ultimately Krishna, maybe you could say Kali's arrangement, but uh, we have a wonderful method of belittling others, finding faults in others, giving a dog a bad name and hanging it, as we used to say. Um, that's a term, you understand that term? Give a dog a bad yeah. name and hang it. Mm-hmm. Make up, even if it's not true, you spread rumors about somebody all over the place until everyone starts doubting them. Mm. It's a very common thing. It's one of the diseases of Kali Yuga. Very common. And even Prabhupada tells the story of one man, and I can't, someone can fulfill in the whole story, but uh, everyone was. Everyone was telling, wherever he met, they made this kind of like this, you said sabotage, they made this arrangement. Conspiracy. Conspiracy. Conspiracy, good word. Conspiracy against him. Everyone tell him he's a ghost. So whoever he met, what's happened to you? You've become a ghost. I'm not a ghost. What are you talking about? You're a ghost. No, that's nonsense. But everyone he met said the same thing. He started to think he was a ghost. So we have an excellent system nowadays. Well, in, I think in general terms it's called social media. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Excellent system of pretty much of, you know, sabotaging somebody, if you want to use that word, conspiring, conspiracy, call it what you will. will whether it's correct or not, it creates this feeling or doubt. And then you start going on all these sites, you press the button. To find out more, press the button. Mm-hmm. Press the button. And you go, goodness knows where you go. And you go on and on and on, and you fall into the well, like the lion. You'll fall into the well. Easy to get captured, isn't it? Have you ever had that problem? <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe I'm the only, I'm, I'm the only one who has that problem. <laughs> It's easy to get trapped like this. Yeah. Even if you don't get trapped, the, 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 kind of the media goes out there. You receive some mail, you receive something on your WhatsApp or something. What is this? The 
I had, I, I get a class at Sinatra and someone criticized me for something. And then I asked, may I inquire your name so that I can tell you, you know, the circumstances. And he didn't answer to that. So I said, uh, as you are not responding, I don't think you're a Brahmin because a Brahmin is truthful. And I don't think you're a Chatra even because you're a coward. Oh. <laughs> Heavy. <laughs> so what are you? And then he stopped. <laughs> oh, wow, that was a whew, right on the nail on the head. Huh? Yeah, so, you know, are you eligible to make such comments? I'm not talking of you, I'm yeah, talking yeah, I of somebody that. else. We're, the ele we're so expert at judging others, but what is our eligibility? Our real acharyas, the Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj, emphasize this over and over again. Dwell not into the frailties of others. Look within. The whole thing, the arrangement from the devotional point of view, is really in this direction to look at our own hearts. I was reading the other day. It was a quote by, of all people, Winston Churchill. I think it was Winston. It was either Burroughs or Churchill. I've got these quotes of English famous persons. And it said, you are not a failure until you start blaming others. As soon as you point the finger at others, it's because of them, blah, blah. You failed. You've missed the point of your life. You failed in your spiritual pursuit. It may be, you could say, some justification is maybe there. But how long have we been in this material world exploiting and being exploited? Cheating and being cheated? Don't we believe in karma? Don't we believe in the hand of God? Don't we believe that we've got some homework? Don't we believe that the arrangement, maybe Krishna's got a plan here. Maybe he wants to purify me as well. Not that I have to purify everybody else. There's a plan there. So when you see someone else getting the mercy of Krishna, if we want to advance, what do we do? We go on social media now. Don't you know? Don't you know, blah, 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 bang, 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 bang. Forty years ago. <laughs> Forty years ago. <laughs> rascal. He's still a rascal. Now he's puffed up. <laughs> Become tricky. Covering over. <coughs> so on and on. Well, in one sense, if we're a little bit fortunate, we'll see that Krishna may be showing something which I may have. We see others through our own conditioning, to a large extent, you could say it's how it is, and judge accordingly. Atmavan manate jagatta, we think because we have it, others have got it too. There is this competition going on? Subtly or grossly? Either in the heart where you hold on to this negative, jealous feelings for your whole life and that you're feeling some maybe depressed or whatever it is, I don't know. Some unwanted emotional response. Or you get involved. You join the, join the army to, uh, you know, pull them down or belittle them, sabotage, whatever you want to call it. It's not very um, recommended here. It's just called... Kali Chela, the mood of the Kali Chela. We have one thing inside, judge not others, lest you be judge yourself, is another famous, I think it's a Christian oriented statement, I don't know, it comes from our West. So, so easy to do. Bhakti Siddhanta, Maharaj, all of our acharyas emphasize we should look at our own hearts. Try to see these difficult situations or a situation where someone else is being recognized 
I, I, I suffer a lot from this, and uh, I used to suffer even more probably. Now I can, I've got a little bit of, you know, position so I can enjoy my forced position a little bit more. But when I was a nobody, and still I'm really a nobody, there was a tendency to, uh, you know, I think, I'm doing so much service, you know, and this person's, he's not doing much, he's getting all the honours. This is not fair. It's not fair. I can give a better class than they can. They can. Why don't they ask me to give class? <laughs> they're just, they're cared that they're just full of false ego. <laughs> they sing nicely, but it's all false ego. It's all false ego, I can tell, clearly. Because I don't have any false ego, so I can easily tell. <laughs> you think it's, I've been in the movement one, one second longer than them. Why are they asking them to give class? Not fair. Oh, what a different degrees we could say of you know, unfavorable perception. How to see Krishna's mercy coming in all different ways. I guess that's the goal of our life to really, as it says here, that mercy bestowed upon Rupa and Sanat. Their hearts were open. They were humble. They felt themselves the lowest of the low. Lowest in the worm in stool. It's easy to say. It's not the same to actually realize this or to have that inner acceptance. It takes a little time sometimes. Krishna is also working kindly for the devotees, those who are aspiring to attain the mercy of Krishna. He is also working there. And we see, it's like, well, I don't know if this is a good example, but it is an example nonetheless. Um, perhaps many of you have had experience in your life of book distribution. Some of you may be still active in the world of book distribution. I have little experience here in Germany, quite a lot of experience in France and other countries. And sometimes when you're having a very, very good day, what we call a very good day, what do we call a very good day on Sankata? Book distribution, or none, whatever, but let's say book distribution. What would be a good day? When many books, we can get yeah. many books. Yeah. People are stopping and taking books like anything yeah. and giving donations like anything, and you're feeling. How do you feel? <laughs> you distribute books? Yeah. How do you feel? <laughs> you feel great, you feel happy. <laughs> huh? What do you say? How much? <laughs> How what? How much? How much the day is going up? How much? <laughs> My hearing is the problem. How much? How much something? How much, how much, how much money? Yeah. You want more money? More and more and more and more money. Money, money. Well, yeah, you can look at that in different ways. But basically speaking, you feel pretty chuffed. You feel pretty good, huh? Mm. And sometimes, and it doesn't have to be, but sometimes, what happens as well? Huh? What is it? Feeling bad. Yeah? Well, you might be. Well, that's an interesting so, thing. But usually if you're doing really well, that comes next, maybe. Uh -huh. But uh, if you're doing really well, what you think is really well, you know. Uh -huh. I mean, I remember one time I was in Malaysia on Sand Book Distribution at a market in Aritam in Penang, the Chinese market, and it was, must have been a special day in their calendar, because there's all Buddhist people, and you know, they don't like you to sell things, so you just, especially, well, I wasn't a sannyasi, I was a grihasta then, it was back in the 90s, I was just holding my cloth out like this, I'd wear cloth, you know, mm. just hold, I can't do it very well, I'm sat on it, but you know, this begging cloth, just holding it out, and I'll tell you frankly, people were queuing up to oh. put money in the cloth. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty, hundred people queuing up just to drop money in my cloth. And everyone got a book, so that was nice. 
But, you know, I started thinking, my God, this is amazing, huh? <laughs> so what am I thinking? I'll give another example to make it easier. I mentioned this the other day. The very first book I ever had the privilege of distributing in my life, Brahma's book, right? was in London, in Earl's Court, if you know London. It was 1972, March, and I joined a little bit before that, not much, and we were sent out the Krishna book, big, hard, bound Krishna books had just arrived, second shipment to London, and up to then we had no books practically, only magazines when I was in here. So now we had books, and they sent me out on book distribution Sunday morning. Sunday morning, quite early, we left at 10 o'clock or something from the temple, which is early for English people. And uh, we went door to door in Earl's Court trying to sell Krishna book. Now, this is in 1972, you know, we had very little idea how to sell books at all. A little bit more maybe now. But then, no idea. Nobody knew what to say, at least who was with us. Four of us went out. I think I went out with Partha Prabhu. We, we went separately. We went to a, you know, some building, and he went this way, and I went that. And the first door I knocked on, at 10.30 in the morning or something, really early for a Sunday morning, this fellow came out, but after knocking for a while, some fellow came out of the, opened the door, and he was almost naked. Oh. I probably woke him up. He looked like he'd just been woken from a dream. <laughs> and I, I think he thought he was still in a dream. He looked, <laughs> he looked up. He couldn't believe it, you know. There's this fellow dressed like this, you know. <laughs> I said, would you like a... I didn't know what to say. I said, would you like a Krishna book? <laughs> I gave him this huge book, you know. And this weird guy took the book, you know. Started looking at it. Maybe he was still thinking I'm dreaming. And you know, the original Krishna book, if you open it up, the pictures are just out of this world. They're like from a, a baby, you know, they're like children's pictures, you know, they're really far out, you know, so simple and so colourful and so special. And he just started looking at these pictures. And uh, he kind of looked at me, he just, after a while he just said, How much is it? <laughs> and I, I don't know if I said a figure, I said, just give what you can, or I said five pounds. I, uh, but he gave me five pounds, which was, I guess, quite a lot of money in those days. And I thought, my God, this is so easy. <laughs> you just have to knock on the door, give them a book, and say, would you like a Krishna book? And they give you five pounds, you don't have to say anything else. It's so easy. One week later, that was the only book I distributed. <laughs> we hardly did a single one, or maybe one or two between the whole party and the whole week, you know. We didn't mind, actually, in one sense, but for me it was like, I thought this was it, you know. I, kind of, I guess there was a bit of pride and a bit of false ego was there, you know. I thought this is so Well, so what do we think? We start thinking, I'm doing very well. I'm the doer. I must be really advanced or something. I'm doing more than everybody else. Hmm. Sometimes you may think like that. My chanting is perhaps it's better than everyone, but out of humility, I will not reveal this. I will allow others to chant anyway. So many little nuances, little tiny aspects of the false ego. And what does Krishna do, especially on book distribution? If you start thinking you're the doer, well, I'm having a really good day today. Now let me calculate. I've been out here two hours. I've done 30 Bhagavad Gitas. If I stay here for six hours, I will set a new temple record. 100, 100 Bhagavad Gitas in a day. Wow. Then what happens? Krishna cut the energy. The energy is like... Nothing for the rest of the day. <laughs> and you're like, oh. Yeah. The Christian's working there. He's not working. It's not that he doesn't want you to distribute more books. But the ultimate goal of all of this 
It's not just to distribute books. It's not just to do Harinam. It's not just to do this and that. This is all great, but what is the real thing behind it all? What does Krishna want? Purify, purify our heart. To make you humble, <laughs> giving up self ego. Give up false ego, be humble. I mean, what is hum humble? is such a deep subject matter. I mean, it's so mm. deep. It's not just a surface picture. Yeah, so was it maybe to develop love? It developed love for Krishna. To every uh, living being. And every living Krishna, being. Very nice, very nice. I'm sure some of you get that. On Hari Nam, I mean, Mahavishnu Maharaj is a living example, I can only say. Paravita Prabhu, you probably also experienced that. Don't you get that sometimes on Hari Nam, Sankirtan on the street? After, it may happen immediately, but sometimes after a long Hari Nam, you kind of let go of your false ego. You just feel like you're just an instrument for the holy name to, you know, shower mercy on others. And that feeling, as you just said, of of a, 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 a kind of intense love for other living entities starts to, you know, come up in your heart. Book distribution, the same thing. Any service, it can be like that. Any service, whatever, the daily worship. But Krishna bestows that too. But what else is there? So these are lovely points. What else sometimes? Is Krishna trying to remove or change it. What do we got? We got humility, false ego. Detached. Pardon? Detachment. Detachment. Good. Very nice. No time. We haven't got time. You can read all this in, in different places. In Bhagavad Gita you'll find it. I was reading Gita this morning. I'm going to go back to reading Gita again. You know, that's another thing we have in our movement. Um, is not in our, movement, in our movement, a common thing. It doesn't mean everybody. But, you know, I've read that before. I've read the Krishna book already. What next? Where's the Ujjvala Nilamani? Now, where's the this? Where's the that? You know, I met some uh, devotees yesterday and I was quite fascinated. Uh, they seem to have a different idea about Acharya um, on the Rathayatra yesterday. And, oh oh. oh oh. So they were very kind. They gave me one of their books. And I glanced through it last night and I saw some references here. And there are persons I know very, very well, by the way, like from back in the 70s. Um, but besides that, I looked up references to the interactions there. It was fascinating to see the history of, um, let's say, uh, I don't know how I got onto that one. No. Interesting. Mm. Different acharyas, okay, uh, justification. But, uh, the very same personalities, exactly, the two persons they were mentioning, the very same personalities who were the ringleaders of at least one of the greatest threats Prabhupada said that our movements ever had. The same persons that are now inspiring them with their different Acharya philosophy. Um, and that was called the Gopi Bhava, it's termed the Gopi Bhava Club. The very same persons who are behind this very whatever, call it, other idea of the Acharya. And how Prabhupada was so angry. Is it? Was flickering. And, uh, anyway, that's another topic altogether. I don't really know exactly how we're going into it. Um, anyway, back to, let's say, Krishna's hand working and what he's trying to bring out of us. What he's trying to awaken within us. We are, we are an instrument. We're an instrument, very good. Extremely. Important in that sense, not that we're like a machine. No. You know, you can have one time I was talking with Krishna Kshetra Maharaj, he was, neither of us were sannyasis then probably, way back. We're having so much difficulty getting pajaris, and probably, I don't know, here, you know, beautiful deities and beautiful worship maybe. But in many temples they have very great difficulty getting pujaras. Said Maharaj, what, what can we do, Maharaj? But we was the Ministry of Deity Worship. Can you help us in any way? He said, we're working on it. We're working on it. We're very working on making a robot pujari. <laughs> we can mark it all over Iskon. Perfect <laughs> instrument on time.
exactly on time, four, two, three, seven, never makes a mistake. <laughs> it can even chat, well it does it, it's perfect. What do you need people for? Just have a robot. You can have a, maybe book distribution. If you made a robot, they'd probably sell a lot of books, it'd be very novel. Yeah. Program it to say the right thing. Do you speak English? <laughs> Nein, German. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Ja. And then the robot speaks in German. You could do many things. A good idea. You should do that. Multilingual. I mean, huh? great idea. Even the Harry Nam card, you could have a bunch of robots going down the street. Chanting all in time, all dressed nicely, all dancing perfectly. Hey, I already know. <laughs> We're sometimes like robots, sometimes too, to be honest. <laughs> like machines, you know. And he said like that. It's, there's another thing to it, isn't it? It's not just that we do everything. All these things are helping us to try to, be, you know, become eligible, you could say. And get the mercy. Of, all, this is all part of the mercy of Krishna. But you're not the doer? You're not the doer? Of course, that was thread with this whole subject matter. When you're on Sangatan, when you start to think you're the doer, then you suddenly think you're... Then you get done. If you think you're the doer, you get done. <laughs> Finished. <laughs> and then you have a realization, Christmas time, then you get a realization and you pray, drawing out this aspect of us of dependence on the Lord. Total dependence on the Lord. Instrumental, someone said instrument. Instrumental, but this mood of depending on the Lord. Taking shelter of Krishna. Realizing what can we do on our own anyway? Who are we? We were listening to Prithu Prabhu speak a few weeks ago at New Mayapur, and he was uh, mentioning in 1976, Maharishi Maharishi, you were there, I don't know if you were there, Paravita, 76 in Mayapur. Uh, that meeting, you remember that? It was a year when there was a big, uh, let's say, uh, uh, clash, friction between the renunciates, so-called renunciates, the sannyasis and the brahmacharis in America and the grihastas and the, you know, with ladies and so on. It was like, it was really tense, very tense. There was lobbying going on, meetings going on and so on. The temples are for sannyasis. We don't want to collect for these women and children, these grihastas, and blah, blah, blah. It was going on. You know. And of course, it was GBC level. It was all the talk to the GBC, where Prabhupada was there, everything. It was the going on, the whole mood there. And uh, one, there were different aspects of this, but one time, apparently, I wasn't there, but Preetu was telling me that, or telling us, rather, that... Um, I was asking, so what is your opinion about this? Different divorce. Give your opinion. Mm. No. Mm. no. 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 And eventually someone said, well, Srila Prabhupada, what's your opinion? Mm. And Prabhupada said, I don't know. We have to wait for Krishna to tell us. Mm. Of course Prabhupada did. But he's just showing us, you know, our opinion sometimes is the absolute opinion, right? I'm right. I'm right. We may quote Shastra, we may quote this, that, the other. And, you know, okay. But it may not be absolute. We may have some other motivation in our hearts. We may have some anarchy in our hearts. And it may be coming through the filter. We quote, even we quote Shastras, it's quite a common thing. You can more or less, I mean, without getting into detail, was very extremely close to one devotee, initiated Brahmin disciple of one of the Iskand gurus. And they were Mayavadi. Their bottom line philosophy was out and out Mayavadi. They would argue with Banu Maharaj, with Mahavishnu Goswami, not Mahavishnu Goswami, the Indian one. They were never convinced. And uh, Javataka Maharaj, no one could convince them. And they would take verses from the Bhagavatam out of context, quotes out of context, 
and use them to support their argument. You can find a verse to s- 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 justify just about anything you like, practically speaking, if you were a quote somewhere. The tendency is that our business? Well, <coughs> not really. <coughs> of course, we refer to Shastra. But there's more to it than that. Guru Shastra and Sadhu are there. And the effect that it has on our hearts. Is your heart becoming soft? Is your heart becoming compassionate? Is our heart becoming humble? Is our heart becoming respectful? Is our heart becoming happy when we see others achieve the effect of some mercy in Krishna consciousness? Do we feel great? Look at it another way. If somebody is apparently getting mercy, they're doing well, then what is the benefit of our finding fault in them? This is envy, of course, or jealousy, as Prabhupada mentions here. That we may want to find fault, because it makes us look a little bit better. It justifies our false ego. But what would be the, what benefit is there in that? Does that please Krishna? Definitely not. Krishna may kindly smash us, or bring us down, or point it out to us. But what would be a favorable attitude? Inspiration, get inspiration by the other. Pardon? Get inspired by the other. Yes. You can, if they're actually receiving the mercy of Krishna, where do you get the mercy of Krishna from? Where does it come from? From the devotees. From the devotees. Those who've got it. If we want something, we, we generally have to go to somebody who's got it, isn't it? If you want money, you generally have to go to somebody who's got money. Yeah. Pretty hard to get it from someone who doesn't have any money. If you want mercy, where are you going to get it from? The one who has it. So if that person has got that mercy, then it behooves us to associate with them favorably. Maybe that will be a beneficial thing for us. They've advanced in Krishna consciousness. How fortunate if I am able to serve them or associate with them. Maybe by their mercy, by the mercy of Krishna, maybe I can advance a little bit too. <laughs> Not you just do it in a sense of, you know, in the Western world or in our modern society, often it's who you know, not what you know, so to speak. If you know the, the big shot, you can get a nice position, a nice recognition, and so on. Not like that. Not that type of attitude, but the attitude of wanting to have a generally purified heart. To be generally wanting to please Krishna. The whole point is to please Krishna. So, we can see these difficult situations, no matter what they are, people with other philosophies, persons who challenge, uh, our own challenges when you know, we're not getting what we want, or difficulties come our way, confusion, taking shelter of Krishna. Try to see Krishna's hand working. Yes. This is a huge topic, and mm-hmm. you could have a million and one comments and questions. But it can cover everything. To some or another, see Krishna's hand working in different ways, every situation. And not just seeing our own hands working, but Krishna's hands working. Too. Not blaming others. We have to, practically speaking, we could, we could say rules and regulations have to be put into place, uh, you know, morality, so many things externally, but internally, we have to look there. Okay, well, we're going to finish so we didn't touch the second part of this, you could say, subject matter at all. Uh, we did a little bit for Sacharya. I mean, it's all related. It's all related to it. We're all affected by this false Sacharya right from birth. I mean, Bhakti Vinod Thakur is quoted here in the purport on several occasions. He's also famous for his revelation in terms of the various demons who enter Krishna Leela and whom they represent, and the type of anarcha, that means, the type of anarcha which they are presenting, representing. Uh, in the case of Putana, she is the false guru, the false guru who looks very good on the surface, but underneath us is very <coughs> in 
insidious in her case, motivation, false motivation, hypocritical. So right from the word go in this human form of life, we have been basically servants of Kali or servants of Putna. Right from the word go, the first thing you probably, and not the first thing you hear, but the first kind of effect is, you are your body, you're not a spirit soul, you're here to enjoy, and you know, the whole point of human life is to enjoy your senses. You are the enjoyer. You are number one. You are this body, etc. Isn't it? The whole society drains it into us. Parents, school, media, everything. Even religion, practically. So you, we're, we're highly conditioned like this, consciously. I guess it takes a little while for the change to take place. It's not a question, as Bhakti Siddhartha said, of changing the world. This, this is the usual approach. Huh? When we're having a problem, we look, this is, this, 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 this is their problem. They cause us. It's the GBC. You ever heard that one? It's the TP. It's the TP. It's the guru. That's a common one too. It's the guru. It's them sannyasis. They're taking all our money and stashing up like Mahavishnu Swami. You don't, he, he, you don't know him. His Zurich bank account. Yes. Gold bars are building up there. Yes. <laughs> Hello, boy. Here, look him up. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> we know we go back a long time, old boy, don't we? Yes. I first saw you in '71. Do you know when I first saw you? You don't know. Do you know where I first saw you? I'll tell you. I saw you on Market Street in Manchester in 1971. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's history. Selling magazines. Huh? Yes, yeah, selling back to God. It. Right in front of it. They got this. You know that that thing that goes over the road in Manchester now. That it used there used to be some like underground market there. I was going there to get something. You were outside selling back to Godheads. Because I'd already was going to the temple in London, I'd already been, but I'm just visiting friends in Manchester, and I was on the street, and there you were. You were so big. I wanted to talk to you, but you went on and on and on talking to these people, so eventually I had to go. But that was my first time I ever saw my issue, Swami. On the street, selling back to Godheads. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. <laughs> We go, so we have a, a rasa sometimes. Sometimes Maharaj gets his own back on me. <laughs> <laughs> Those days I used to have a tactic selling magazines. So I was the only Sangatan to in Manchester. Yeah. I used to go down Market Street on my own playing cartels. Go all the way down and all the way back playing cartels. And then I thought that created interest, you know, people, who is this long man singing Hare Krishna? And I would stand in that place, and in the lunch hour, they would come. Okay, it's pretty far, right? Yeah. The high Nama books go together. Yeah, oh, they do. Prophet said that they should go together. In one sense, this is the whole process, isn't it? Surrender. It's a surrendering process. And there's no doubt, I mean, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has made it quite clear, Aracharyas have made it quite clear, we don't have to invent something, the wheel's already there, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. The process is given by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu of, of, of evoking this change of our consciousness. As Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj said, it's not the world that has to change. One who thinks that they can reform the world one who thinks that they can reform the world is indeed in need of reform. Mm. The one who thinks that they can reform is in need of reform. You've got it wrong. Everything is going on perfectly by the divine hand of the Lord. Not a blade of grass is moving without his will. Everything is going on by his will. One who thinks that they're the doer is simply, a, is simply an instrument in the hands of the Lord. That's all. The illusion is the way we see it. The only thing he said that has to change is how we see it. 
not what we see, how we see. And that, he says, is changed. And this is the whole point. How we see the situation. This, has, this is for sequel, of course, but it kind of is a little bit more specific. How we see or how we judge the situation. That is a vote, so the change, the, the effective beneficial change is a vote by exposing ourselves to the sound vibration of the holy name. Exposing ourselves. It's food for thought. It's a topic of itself. How we approach the holy name, how we associate with the holy name, whether it's on Harinam Sankirtan, whether it's Japa or whatever it is, study of Shastra, conversations between ourselves, etc., how we see it, how we hear, the hearing process, to hear from those who are pure in heart. This evokes to change this Nivita Krishna, the Girmana, the Voshti Chotam, and all the Ramat, to hear from those who are pure in heart, who have no selfish motivation, who have that mercy of Krishna, to hear from them attentively. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. When is that court case to establish my position as the Acharya? <laughs> as the leader of the French Yatra. <laughs> King Ananda the <III>. Third. <laughs> <laughs> Madness. We want to be, you know, fame amongst the infamous. We want to get our, our glory in this world. Mm. We don't want to be in this world. Only to glorify Krishna. Jai Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Prabhupada Jai. Jai Shri Prabhupada Jai. DJ Garango Dhanitai Ki Jai. Oh, Prem Anandi. What is the schedule today? Is anyone aware of the schedule today? <laughs> it's a Kirtan event. So Do we know where or when? No. I think it's, it's 12. It starts at 12. And where is the event? In the yeah. store. Oh, I've never seen the hall, to my knowledge. Is that a new acquisition? Yes. Because last time I came here... Already a few years. Okay. Pardon? A few years ago. Okay, that's great. I saw a sign out there, I didn't know what it meant. Fantastic. So thank you all so much for your association. Thank you, Maya. I wish you all the best in your wonderful path back to reality. And the solution. Thank you.